Here we're going to extend the results for particle in a 1D box to particle in a 3D box. All right, what we're going to uh, do is the uh, same strategy we had before. We want to solve the Schrodinger equation. Solving the Schrodinger equation means find the wave functions and the energies that satisfy the Schrodinger equation. Now let's uh, review what we did for the 1D case, one dimension. We had the Hamiltonian was equal to minus uh, h bar squared over 2m, the derivative with respect to x, second derivative. That was a Hamiltonian operator. Now when we go to the 3D case, we have just not one dimension, but three dimensions. So if we extend the uh, Hamiltonian to three dimensions, minus uh, h bar squared over 2m, now we have to take the partial derivative, because now we have three dimensions, three variables, second partial derivative with respect to x, plus the second partial derivative with respect to y, plus the uh, second partial derivative with respect to z. All right, and this is the kinetic energy operator. So this is the kinetic energy operator in one dimension, the kinetic energy operator in three dimensions. All right, so that's how we go from 1 to 3D. And now we're going to make the same kind of uh, potential that anywhere inside this three-dimensional box, the three the, um, dimensions of the box are A, B, and C. The potential anywhere in the box is zero, and the potential anywhere outside the box is infinity. So the particle is constrained to be in this three-dimensional box. In that case, the uh, Hamiltonian just consists of the kinetic energy operator, not the potential. We set that equal to zero anywhere the particle can be found. So what we end up with is the three-dimensional uh, particle in a box, namely that um, h psi equal e psi, just like we had before, h psi, sorry, h psi is equal to e psi, where now h is the three-dimensional, um, I'll just put it up here, we already wrote it, three-dimensional kinetic energy operator. All right, so uh, let's write down explicitly what this equation will be. So we have minus h bar squared over 2m, the second derivative with respect to x, plus the second derivative with respect to y, plus the second derivative with respect to z of this uh, now three-dimensional wave function. It's now a function of not only x, but also the other two Cartesian coordinates, y and z. That's now equal to the energy of the particle in the three-dimensional box times psi, again, of uh, a function of x, y, and z, three variables. All right, so now what we have to do is to solve Schrodinger equations for the three-dimensional particle in a box. Uh, that means figure out what these three-dimensional wave functions are and then their associated energies. And again, what this is is a, a particle in a box. We'll draw a box here. And the dimensions of the box are A, B, and C, where A is the x-direction, B is the y-direction, C is the z-direction. All right, let's see if we can make any progress doing this. What we're going to assume is that the dimensions x, y, and z are independent of one another. Let's say there's no preferential direction that the particle will travel. x, y, and z are equally probable. If x doesn't depend on y, doesn't depend on z, then what we can do is use a technique called separation of variables. So now our wave function which is a function of the three uh, Cartesian coordinates, can be separated into a wave function, which just depends on the x-coordinate, a wave function that just depends on the y-coordinate, and a wave function that just depends on the z-coordinate. It's a technique called separation of variables. And that's valid if x, y, and z are totally independent. They don't depend on one another. All right, so in that case, let's write down the Schrodinger equation where we have these separated variables. So my h bar squared over 2m, 
the second derivative with respect to x plus the <clears throat> second derivative with respect to y plus the second derivative with respect to z of here x which is just a function of x y which is just a function of y and z which is just a function of z let's operate on that well if you're just taking the partial derivative with respect to x that means y and z are constant you can pull those out so this is um, minus h bar squared over 2m times <clears throat> y. I'll just ignore writing the functions because we'll just now assume that y is a function of y, z is a function of z. Second derivative of x with respect to x, that's capital X, that's lowercase x, second derivative. Plus now we're going to take the derivative with respect to y, x and z are constant in that case, x, z times the partial derivative of the wave function y, y squared, and then similarly we can pull out the x and the y and now we have the second derivative with respect to z sorry that's z of z okay and that's equal to um, e times x y z the wave function when the variables are separate so let's uh, rearrange this in a little bit here we have y z minus uh, h bar squared over 2m the second derivative of x with respect to x plus x z times minus uh, h bar squared over 2m times the second derivative of y with respect to y plus x y times minus h bar squared over 2m the second derivative with respect to z of the wave function z okay so uh, that is equal to e times x y z now here's where the idea of separation of variables and independence of x, y, and z occur. So here just consider uh, y and z as a constant and now we're just looking at how uh, the wave function, the x dependence of wave function here. And here we have the x or the y dependence of the wave function. Here we have the z dependence of the wave function. Each one of these contributes independently to the total energy. So what we can do is uh, rewrite this as the energy from the x d dimension plus the energy from the y dimension plus the energy of the z dimension times x, y, z. So that comes from the independence uh, of uh, x, y, and z. We said that they're um, independent. So what this means is that each one of these acts as a mini uh, Schrodinger equation and they're independent so we can separately consider this separately consider this and separately consider this because they're, we separated the variables and the variables don't depend on one another it's, there's no preferential way for the particle to move or for the particle to have kinetic energy equally random so that means we can separate out the individual components of the uh, total wave function into x, y, and z components and each one of those will have its separate energy. So we can say that y, z times uh, minus h bar squared over 2m second derivative with respect to x of x that's equal to the energy contribution from that particular Cartesian coordinate times x, y, z where the y z's cancel out so there's our mini Schrodinger equation for the x direction similarly we can write uh, using the same steps the uh, Schrodinger equation for the y direction 
as the energy in the y direction times y and in the z direction minus h bar squared over 2m the second derivative with respect to z sorry z that should be a z and why I'm writing x and that's a squared that's the wave function that's the variable that's the energy from the z component times z all right this has a solution why what why do we know the solution it's because we solved it for a one dimension a particle in a box in one dimension so this is a one dimension this is a one dimension and this is a one dimension so this means you have a wave function well let me use this um, symbol for wave function x it's a function of x is the square root of 2 over a times sine let's use n sub x to indicate the quantum number for this x component sine n pi x over a and the energies of these e for nx will be the quantum number nx squared pi squared h bar squared over 2 m a squared so there's a solution of that one dimensional uh, <clears throat> particle in a uh, particle in a one dimensional box and similarly, um, if we can write down immediately what the wave function for that y is, that's the square root of 2 over b. Why b? Well, we said that uh, the dimension of the box uh, goes from 0 to b in the y direction. So the square root of 2 over b. And then we have sine. And then we use n sub y for the quantum number, pi y over a, a b, sorry, b. <clears throat> and similarly the energy for that component, the y component, ny, is equal to the quantum number ny squared times pi squared times h bar squared over 2mb squared. So that's what that is. And finally, we write z, the z component. It's just the square root of 2 over c, the length of the box in the z direction, times the sine of the z quantum number, pi z, the length of the box in this c, and the energy corresponding to the nz quantum number, nz squared, pi squared h bar squared over 2 m c squared that's what that is so what we found by separating variables is that in a three-dimensional case each dimension can be considered separately and therefore we have the wave function uh, already solved for the one-dimensional case and the energies also so let's put this all together remember that the total wave function was x times y times z so that would be the square root of 2 over a square root of 2 over b square root of 2 over c sine of n in the x direction pi x over a sine of n in the y direction pi y over b sine of n in the z direction pi z over c and remember the energy was equal to the energy from the x component they're independent plus the energy of the y component plus the energy of the z component and that's equal to n well just sort of skip a step here so uh, what we can do see they all these all have the term pi squared well yeah, we should write it all down shouldn't we yeah and x pi squared h bar squared we could really pull out that over 2m mass of the particle times a squared plus and this is squared there and y squared pi squared h bar squared over 2m b squared plus 
and z squared pi squared h bar squared over 2m c squared. So there we have it. This is the wave function. We solved the Schrodinger equation. We got the wave function for a particle in the 3D box, and we got the energies corresponding to those wave functions in the 3D box. That's kind of neat. But wait, there's more. Let's make the box a cube. So in a cube, a equals b equals c. So we can write the uh, energies of the particle in a cube. Energy will be well, let's see, a squared, a squared, a squared, all the lengths of the cube are equal. So this is just equal to nx squared plus ny squared plus nz squared pi squared h bar squared over 2m a squared, where now a is the length of the cube. So that uh, pretty much sums up a particle in a cube. What we started with was uh, the Hamiltonian for a particle in a 3D box. We were able to separate it out into variables. And what we got was essentially the sum of uh, one dimensional, th the sum of three one dimensional particles in a box. Okay, that's it.